Welcome to Layer by Layer. Today we're going to talk about the Bamboo Labs cloud snafu, what we're working on over here behind the scenes, projects coming up, a big update to our POD app, and a few other things around the corner. So let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, the Bamboo Labs cloud uh, bug. Um, this is a developing story. Basically, earlier this week, a uh, number of printers, Bamboo Labs printers, started up at night and started printing things that people did not ask them to print. And this is, um, it's to be expected. Uh, a cloud networked machine has software updates and occasionally software is gonna have bugs. Uh, when you have thousands of machines and devices out there, there's no way to completely test it before you deploy these types of pieces of software. So it's not that surprising. As far as the, the issues that came up, uh, most of it sounded like somebody had started a print and the printer just started up on its own and that kind of thing. I don't, we don't know if it like overrode any sort of internal firmware. Um, from a product standpoint, um, it's not good. But as far as the danger of this, um, a software bug from a cloud system going to a firmware controlled machine um, is kind of a problem, but very rarely would those software bugs cause some sort of catastrophic failure of like over and overheated and burst into flame. Um, so I, I don't think that's an unreasonable type of assumption to go to. Um, having the machine turn on and bang itself up a little bit, bumping together against some other stuff, it's not great because it damages the machine, but that would be something that I would expect would be under warranty. Uh, so far as we know right now, Bamboo Labs has been responding really well. Um, so it's to be expected with a lot of cloud-connected devices. Um, and like Joel, the 3D printing nerd, kind of mentioned that too and like his Twitter thread about it. Um, however... In the context of us as a large print farm, a lot of people ask us why we don't use Brusa or why don't you use Bamboo Lab or whatever else it was. And these are kind of the reasons. Uh, if we use off-the-shelf consumer printers that are meant to have software updates and that kind of thing, uh, then you run the risk of being having your day ruined. Uh, and if we deploy like 500 or 1,000 of these things, like in our mega farms or something like that, it just doesn't make sense because Bamboo Labs can arbitrarily make a move at any moment and just like really ruin our life. Um, so that's why we don't use external machines because their development cycle and that kind of stuff, they don't have to inform us about and that kind of thing. So we can't use third-party machines uh, for our production systems. Um, there's also other design issues and that kind of thing, which we've talked about in other videos, but um, this is a prime example of why we don't use other people's machines inside of our facilities and instead we develop our own machines, even though that makes life a lot harder for us in other ways. But at least we have control and reliability um, and predictability about what's going to happen. But anyhow, um, in the context of bugs in software going out though, uh, our print on demand app, uh, the app that we released where folks can just upload a file and get a print back. Uh, thank you all who have been using it and thank you for everybody who has been giving us bug feedback on it. Uh, hopefully we've been trading people free print parts for uh, a bug report. So please use that POD app and if your file doesn't upload and your order doesn't go through, we will print the part and ship it to you for free. Uh, so you can get a free print out of it if you've been trying to test it out or something. Um, but there was a big old software update just here in the last uh, week and a half or so uh, where we updated a number of things in, uh, in the back end that should help improve it because there were some situations where it break down. So for some people, drag and drop of files wasn't working quite right and would cause it to break. Um, but all of those issues have been fixed. Um, so we're trying it again. At Slant3D, we really have a very uh, duct tape type of and, and, and lean development cycle of get to a minimum viable product and ship it. And then you get feedback and then you improve it from there. And that's the POD app has really been a good example of that. Um, but the POD app has also been a demonstration of our API. We've been getting a lot of good data from people using it to see how we can improve the API before we release that publicly. Um, Shopify and Etsy apps are coming out. Uh, thank you again to everybody who has also been submitting requests for those. They're coming. They should be out very, very soon, so you will be able to connect a Shopify store or an Etsy store to a Slant 3D farm and get your parts made and shipped to your customers without having to do anything. Basically, drop shipping of 3D printed parts. So those will be out very soon as well. Um, ba, 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 da, 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 da. Kickstarter coming up. No, I don't want to do that one yet. I'm going to say that for the end. The Kickstarter, we got massage rollers coming out here soon. Um, but I wanted to talk about the water bottle video. 
Um, the water bottle video was a lot of fun to do uh, because the water bottle video, I, I like flipping myths because in engineering, there's basically nothing that you can't do. You can pretty much do whatever you want. So anytime anybody says, oh, you can't whatever, that's eh, kind of just a challenge. Uh, 3D printing, especially FDM, a lot of people believe that it's not food safe and a lot of people believe that it's not waterproof. Both of those are wrong uh, in the process itself. But we wanted to really kind of knock this out of the park. So we did the, the water uh, bottle video in order to show how you could do it so that it'd be a perfectly reliable product. Uh, the problem with waterproof FDM is that it is kind of more expensive and it's very tough to maintain high reliability, but you can do it on a few. It's just not really good for mass production. Um, and as far as the food safe, the food safe is a whole different monster that does not have a final discrete answer. Uh, FDM is not not food safe, but it's also not 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 food safe, that kind of thing. Um, so, but the water bottle video was cool because you had to, got to show how okay you engineer the outer casing and then you design a water bottle and seal inside of it so that it does this that and the other thing. And we could have done like rubber plastic dip interior and that kind of thing, but that's too expensive. We have to follow our rules of is this manufacturable? And these water bottles are manufacturable, which also kind of gave us the idea of what should we do merch. 3D printed merch. I don't know why anybody would want 3D printed merch on this channel, but we don't want to do t-shirts or anything like that. I mean, we got, we got, we got stuff, um, but the, uh, we don't want to do t-shirts really very much, um, but we should do something. We should do something because it's fun and we got really good designers in house and folks who are wanting t-shirts and that kind of thing. And I'm super cheap. So we never get like t-shirts for just the company in general, but, uh, Anyhow, merch is a thing coming down. Anyway, the water bottles were an example of like merch that you could do, um, as well as being mass producible. But this applies to almost any type of product. If you, 3D printing enables so much capability. Uh, the ability to not have molds, to have thick parts, to have any geometry you want, you're able to create entirely new types of products. But this new process does have some restrictions. So how do you work around those restrictions? I have a cold, um, there are allergies or something. It's been really hot here in Boise lately. But anyway, um, working within those restrictions, how can you still get the result that you want? So like, okay, FDM printing has all the scale, you don't have molds, you have all this geometry control, you can make something really original, but you can't make it waterproof. So how do you then make it waterproof? And it's like, oh, well, we'll put a liner inside the bottle and so on and so forth. So. Um, it was a cool video, and we want more suggestions and ideas of videos like that, of products that are impossible. Um, and we got a few. We have a few kind of in the can, um, but only a few, and I'd like a lot more. So uh, if you guys can give us those, that would be fantastic. Um, let's see here. The water bottle video was cool. The perfume packaging video was cool. That one was a lot of fun to do. Um, having these very clear demonstrations of final products where we build a final product um, is a really cool format. Um, and thank you all for subscribing. Just in the last couple of weeks, I don't know if I've thanked you guys in other podcasts, but we recently crossed 30,000 subscribers um, and it's cranking right along. So thank you all who have been sharing it and watching it and uh, hopefully they'll continue to be useful. We will be doing a lot of the design for mass production 3D printing videos. Um, so there'll be more of those coming and little tricks and tips and features that you can put into your prints that can be useful. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know. That's that. Um, in the context of projects and the real 3d printed product videos, we wanted to show kind of the process of creating products. And we, we've been close to this for forever. I've been in product design for almost a decade now. Um, and then everybody else has seen many of these go by. Of course, we have our clients go by. So we want to show how to create a product straight from scratch and kind of get in and turn that into like a video format itself. Um, so this is kind of the first one of those. This is, this is a massage roller. Just like that. See? Yeah. It works if you're working out or if you are just sitting at a desk or whatever else it was and you just want to work out a calf or your lower back or something. But... Uh, we have designed a series of these massage rollers. 
uh, and we're going to put them on Kickstarter. They will both be available for um, purchase of the actual physical print itself, of course, um, because we want the world who doesn't have a 3D printer to be able to get a hold of this kind of stuff. The, the fact that 3D printed products are restricted to people with 3D printers is kind of silly, and that's kind of one of our operating goals is make cool products available to the world by just not having the world have to know how to print stuff. It's like letting everybody have a spreadsheet rather than having to learn how to code. It's that kind of a mentality. Um, but anyway, the Kickstarter for this will be coming out very soon. Uh, to be perfectly blunt, we had a schedule for this earlier, um, but there be shenanigans, uh, and we're having a tough time getting Kickstarter to approve the project for some reason. We don't know why. We honestly do not know why. But uh, anyhow, we're, we'll get that all broken loose and approved, and there's actually uh, about three videos uh, about this, and we will have more after it. Basically, it's the launch of the Kickstarter, then we'll talk about the Kickstarter in process. Actually, that'll probably be here on the podcast, and then we'll break down the Kickstarter of like how it went. So if you want to get the files for this one and a whole bunch of other ones, just massage rollers in general, they're really good. They're really comfortable. They're, they're nice. Um, uh, go ahead and check that out because, yeah, you'll be able to get a hold of – you'll be able to purchase somewhere between 5 and 10 of the files uh, as a backer or a single roller or multiple rollers. So that will be coming down the pipe uh, very soon, as soon as we get it cleared. I mean, it's all, it's all done. It's all done. It's all done. We've just been waiting on – third parties to figure out how to get it done. Um, but anyway, that's that. Uh, that's pretty much the news. Not too much going on in 3D printing world in general. Uh, we've been plugging along. Oh, um, we're going to have some announcements about filament here very soon too. Uh, we've got that nailed down to where there's a roadmap uh, that we can get up and we'll be ready to announce that very soon. So there will be filament coming here very soon. Uh, I'm not going to go into it too much more because it, it kind of needs its own video um, or at least more time that's in better context. Uh, <laughs> we're saving that. Okay. <laughs> um, All right. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Oh, this was the other thing. Uh, we've been thinking about maybe making another channel. Um because the Slant 3D channel is mass production 3D printing. That is what we do. That is what we talk about. Um, the stuff that is, many of that stuff crosses over into like hobby 3D printing and that kind of stuff, of course. Um, but our focus is mass production. So we do not do printer reviews. We don't do troubleshooting kind of things. We don't do any of that stuff because it's just, it, it's not what this channel is about and lots of other people are doing it. That being said, we do have insights in that area that are uncommon because when we work with hundreds to thousands of machines at a time, uh, we pick some stuff up that other folks just can't. So we've been considering how to make some other channels and that format might be something we might consider. So if anybody has an opinion on that, please let us know down in the comments about if there's a topic or genre around printing uh, that is not covered very well um, that you guys think we could contribute to and be useful at. Um, cause yeah, we want to, we want to continue to push on YouTube, uh, but the slant 3d channel is restricted to slant 3d mass production projects and that kind of stuff. And we embellish that only occasionally here on the podcast. But, uh, anyway, there's all that kind of stuff. That's pretty much it guys. That's all I have in my show notes here for this. So it'll be a fairly quick one, but, uh, once again, thank you all who have been watching. The subscribers have been growing a lot over the last month or two. Um, and we we really appreciate all the all the love that you guys have been giving us. Uh, we hope that we can continue to keep on cranking out good stuff and interesting topics, but we also continually need ideas. Um, but uh, yeah, let us know if there's anything that you guys want us to talk about. Uh, do check out the Kickstarter when it's announced here on the channel. We'll have a video released when the Kickstarter goes live, um, and uh, that should do it. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. <laughs>